Hi, I'm Karen Hurt, and we're here with our next edition of Asking for a Friend. And I know this is on so many of your hearts and minds right now, which is how do I stay emotionally connected to my team when everyone is working remotely? And I thought, the best person to call on this topic is my friend Tanvir Nasir. He is the author of Leadership Vertigo. And uh, Tanvir, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to join us. My pleasure. It's good to be here, Karen. So what would you say? I, I, you know, we had some uh, nice conversation around this, and I'd love to hear a few of your thoughts for our listeners. Well, I think the interesting thing that we always have to remember is that as leaders, we're setting up the emotional context for employees. The best examples, we've all had a place where we had to work in where we would always whisper, is the boss in a good mood today? Should I go see them, right? That's what we're talking about here. And I mean, maybe in most workplaces, it's a lot more subtle. It's not as obvious where we have to be careful. Oh, he's in a bad mood today, so let's not, let's not go see him today. But it doesn't change the fact that your emotions do affect the emotional environment your employees are operating in. And in times like now where we're really dealing with a lot of uncertainty, we are really looking for leaders to provide that clarity and that emotional support. Now, it's not to say you gotta be a cheerleader. It's just that you have to understand how are you showing up? Are you really focused and engaged to really hear and understand your employees' concerns? Or are you really more focused on stuff that's going on in your own head, things that you have on your own plate. Like after this call, I gotta jump on this next call. And so my, my brain's kind of racing to the next two, three steps. I'm not really hearing, or I'm not even really being aware of my own emotional state and what I'm relaying to people in this call. Oh, that's so good. Do you have some specific advice for how do you, A, know if you're showing up well, and B, uh, what, what, how do you do that well? Any specific uh, techniques? Yeah, one thing I would suggest is if you think back to when we would have our regular meetings, whether it's in a meeting room or in our cafeteria and so forth, right? People would just usually casually come in. We start having little chit chats in our groups. We just talk about not necessarily stuff related to the meeting, right? We're just connecting with our colleagues. And then, you know, the big boss comes in, he starts talking with some people and then says, all right, guys, let's get started, right? So we have this moment where we're just connecting as people. Now, if you think of uh, having a group meeting on a remote uh, platform like Zoom, everyone chimes in, it's impossible for us to have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody because it's just going to be a cacophony of noise. So one person will say something, someone, oh, sorry, what were you saying? And so the conversations become disconnected. So I think a good step is to actually encourage Let's have people have a group session and you moderate. It's like, look, let's go around the table, the virtual table, and everyone just check in. Let us know how you're doing. Uh, another good thing is to, you know what, try to do like a, either like a lunch or a happy hour virtually. You know, invite people and say, look, if you're working from home, you know, have your kids come join us. Let, the, let us meet your kid, uh, meet your pet. Let's bring your dog. I'd love to see, oh, you have a dog. I have a Labrador. I'd love to see your dog with mine. This is the kind of way we can create emotional connection because now we're not just looking at our employees in terms of the task they play on helping us get through this particular part, but really addressing their emotional thing. I want to see you as a person. I want to connect with you. And that connection is what we see and we're hearing so much is lacking today. Uh, I think that's really good advice. Do you think that I, we keep hearing about the Zoom fatigue? Do you think you can get emotional? You know, it, you're, can it become too much? all of this connection and seeing inside everybody's homes all the time, can that also become overwhelming? I'm curious what oh, you think. I, I think so, but I think again, it comes down to the context that we're creating. If I, I've had conversations with people where uh, I'm looking forward to the next one and large part because I'm getting that human contact, that human engagement. I think where it becomes Top fatigue is when it's really we're relying a lot on our cognitive load okay this is a really deep dive meeting we're going to focus on this okay who's taking care of this thing all right so we're going to get that done by this bob can you fill out that report make sure they get it so forth so we're having if we have that kind of conversation you jump into another one and it's about something unrelated you're going to have zoom fatigue because you're not having that time as my physics professor used to say to come up for air and just be a person just 
you know, share, oh, you know what? I just finished, caught up watching that season of the show everyone's been talking about. It was amazing and so forth. We're not giving ourselves that time because the, the tech platforms we're using don't really allow for it. They don't really allow for us to have these private conversations. And so I could see that we're having that fatigue if we're not connecting emotionally, which is what we also need. We need that emotional reconnection to recharge our batteries. Nice. Oh, Tambir, thank you so much. We really appreciate your thoughts. My pleasure. Glad to be here.